Hello there, my name is Ntoye Muilwa. I am a PhD student uh, at the Department of Biological and Environmental Sciences. I am a botanist. I love working with plants and my PhD focuses on understanding the evolutionary histories of plants, how plants evolve and linking that to uh, how different ethnic groups actually utilize plants. And today I'm here at the Gothenburg Botanical Gardens at the Herb Garden. Welcome to the Herb Garden. And one of the topics that I love talking about is medicinal plants. And most medicinal plants are normally um, herbaceous in nature, meaning that they are herbs. So I'm going to take you today on a tour to talk about a couple of um, herb, herbs that are used both medicinally and for gardening purposes, landscaping, and also for culinary purposes. So I invite you to have this tour with me. So the first herb here that we have today, it's uh, a, a plant, a species that belongs to the sunflower family, Asteraceae, and then this one belongs to the genus um, Artemisia. Uh, it's called Artemisia Pontica in the Latin name, but the English name of it is um, the Roman wormwood. So this plant, um, it's quite interesting in that it's it has quite several uses due to this spectacle of um, chemical suits that it possesses. For example, it's used um, for culinary purposes um, as a flav flavorant on wines and liqueurs and then it's because it has this chemical this bitter chemical that sort of gives a very different flavor to wines and liqueurs but on top of that it's also used to help with digestive um, issues because of the bitter taste of it it enhances the stomach to actually produce some chemicals which enhance with digestion so it helps quite a lot with digestion and it has um, quite a camphory flavor. It's a, it's a variety that, that is actually known to have high levels of camphor in it. And so it's called the camphor plant in other names. And it has actually been used, the essential oils are used for the generation of um, things like camphor and, 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 the, and the likes. And this plant also though, it contains another toxic substance at a, at a particular stage in its life it has a very toxic substance which is which can mildly affect people who use it the use of this plant medicinally it depends on the knowledge of when to use it and when not to use it for example and having said that i'm from south africa this plant looks very much similar like artemisia afra which is known as the african woodworm which we use primarily different ethnic groups used uh, Artemisia afra for various purposes mainly to to help with medicinal problems if you have a cold or if you have very high fevers you can use the plant to actually help with your your mucus and so i find it interesting that we have a variety here of something that looks quite similar to a species in africa and it makes me wonder how cultures actually, cultures of different ethnic groups actually sort of borrow from one another in terms of using these very closely related plants. So over here, we have another species belonging to the sunflower family. This one is called um, Artemisia abritanum, and that in English is Southern Wormwood. 
this is suggested to come from this is because it's suggested to come from southern Europe at least and this one when we compare it to the one we just saw earlier it does not have a very a camphor taste instead it has a very lemon taste or a citrusy taste and also it's very bitter compared to the other one we saw because it has these monoterpenoids a higher concentration of these monoterpenoids and it's traditionally been used in culinary and for medicinal purposes for example for medicinal purposes it aids with um, things like indigestion and then to aid to sort of enhance digestion in itself because of its very various suit of chemicals it also has other chemicals that are very poisonous especially when put in liquor uh, thugone is one of those chemicals that are present in this um, plant and it is known that in smaller quantities even in alcohol to use as alcohol flavoring it can sort of cause poisoning so then having said that this plant compared to the one we saw earlier is more used for for making salads and for other culinary purposes but it's not highly used for flavoring alcohol at least this is because of those chemicals that I just mentioned earlier but it's also a landscaper's best friend as you can see it's very green and bright and it decorates the garden and then landscapers they love using it because it gives their their garden a high variety and then it also it's also one of the most pungent smelling Artemisias at least for today the ones that we saw and having said that if you come into a garden that has Artemisia it's easy to pick up the smell because it has these secondary metabolites that gives it this uh, very citrusy flavor compared to South African one it's not highly used for helping with things like um, breathing problems and the likes this is not clear why it might be because of the different interactions of the chemicals but it is rather used mainly in the culinary space and then a little bit to help with indigestion and the likes so we have seen two Artemisias now we have talked about the African one and I think that gives us a close-up of what Artemisias are capable of doing for different ethnic groups and for different cultures. So over here we have a very ginormous herb hard to believe it's a herb it's called Angelica Archangelica or simply wild celery in English and it has these little hollow stems inside you can just crush it with with your fingers but I wouldn't advise you to do that <laughs> uh, and this plant it grows it can grow very tall and it's a biennial. By biennial, I mean that it can grow to a certain level in one year and then only flower in another year before dying off. So what that means is that because it's a medicinal plant during different life stages of um, the growth, for example, you can only use different parts of the plant at different stages. For example, now it's flowering so it's nice the stems are very really nice and ready to to be chopped off and be used for maybe in salads for example it has this very bitter taste in the stems but the bitter taste unlike most bitter plants they're bitter and cooling but this one is bitter and warming so it can sort of enhance digestion in a way also typical of herbs they they help very much with enhancing digestion because they they sort of have a similar family of compounds that enhance with the digestion especially the bitter ones 
So this one, now that it's flowering, I said you can opt for the stems, but not just the stems I used, there's also the roots that I used. And the roots, we can't see any right now, but the roots, when you use the roots of these plants, you need to use them before flowering when it's still quite young and you don't use them fresh, you use them after you've dried them and then you can add them to the teas to give flavor to your teas and the likes and yeah so there has been some suggestions that this this plant also contains at a particular period in its life poisonous substances and therefore it's quite important when you are utilizing this plant for food or medicinal purposes you need to know at which period the plant contains these um, poisonous compounds. One of the other interesting things about these plants is that there's this mythology related to it. The name itself, Archangelica, it comes from, so the story goes, during the plague when people were dying they didn't have cure for this great plague that was making them perish one of the people who were there, who were the medicine men, they were actually visited by an archangel whose name I can't remember, but this archangel, he actually suggested a suit of plants of which this is one which might resemble those plants and he suggested this plant to help in curing this great plague and then help with people, helping stop people from perishing and hence this name Archangelica. And so it has um, other relatives that are, that are heavily used to especially help with things like headaches and paralysis and the likes. And, but this one, it has not been conclusively uh, been used in helping with those ones. The name of the species that I'm talking about is um, Angelica pube pubescens. So these are, the variety of herbs that you can encounter in a, in a garden or at a market and you just need to know how do they actually assist you in making you healthier or in giving you in making you eat healthier or in giving you medicine having said that herbs are mostly medicinal plants there are other herbs that are also very poisonous especially when eaten at a particular point in, t in their lifetime or in their life cycle. So having taken you on this short tour, I want you to promise that you will at least visit again and then we identify herbs that you can then plant in your garden because herbs also help in the, spirit, the, the well-being of a person because of these aromatic compounds they produce. <laughs>